everybody, this is Mr. Bortnick for AP Calculus AB. We are in unit four, which is contextual applications of differentiation. Today's topic is 4.4, which is introduction to related rates. Enjoy today's notes. All right, we're on to section 4.4, introduction to related rates. Related rates is one of those topics in AP Calculus that I feel like uh, gives students a lot of anxiety because it looks pretty complicated. Uh, but I'm hoping that today's notes are going to help you feel you know, pretty calm. Um, what I would just say for you is that uh, what we're going to be doing today in 4.4 and what we're doing also in 4.5 relates a lot back to this topic from chapter three called implicit differentiation. So implicit differentiation is huge if we're going to be able to do these related rates problems. And if you're don't remember that topic, I would encourage you to go back to the 3.2 video uh, to, to make sure that you brush up on that. Because if you understand implicit differentiation, these related relate rates problems are going to really be a breeze for you. Um, the other thing I want to mention before we really get into it is that related rates uh, really ties in a lot of the things that we learned way back when in geometry class. Whoops, not goometry, but geometry class. Uh, we're going to be using lots of information about shapes that are going to be really useful. Specifically, you know, things we know about triangles like the area or the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, a lot of uh, area formulas come up, volume formulas come up. If we're talking about shapes like cubes, talking about rectangles, squares, you know, trapezoids, all sorts of those things. Um, it's really useful to to uh, make sure that you've got those formulas for from back in geometry, you know, memorized um, and we'll talk about at a later time you know which ones I would suggest to make sure that you know for sure uh, but we'll, we'll hit some of those along the way today and some of them will also come up in practice uh, after you do these do these notes so let's get started so many variables have a familiar relationship or in other words a way variables are quote-unquote related to each other a great example is the Pythagorean theorem, right? We know that uh, for any right triangle, one of the great things about a right triangle is that there's a relationship between the three sides of a right triangle. And that relationship is that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Now, again, we know that that is only true for right triangles, but what does that tell us? Well, in these cases, the, when we're talking about related rates, what I'd want you to imagine is if we were to, for example, move or increase or decrease one of these sides. If I were to take this A and move this point down, obviously A would get smaller, right? This distance would be decreasing. But in addition to that, the C would also have to change as well, because as I move this point down, let me try this like in a different color. So I would move this point down. If this were, it were moved to right here, we would notice that not only is the A smaller, but the C decreased as well. The length of that distance decreased as well. So the lengths from A to C are related to each other. Now, a lot of these problems that we're going to discuss in this, this section and the next section are going to involve movement and change. And so when we say that things are related to each other, that means that uh, you know, lengths or angles or things like that depend on the things that are around it. If one thing changes, then other things in the, the picture are going to change as well. And we can actually use relationships that we know, like the Pythagorean theorem, to figure out how those things are changing uh, and figure out, you know, not only just lengths, but also the rate at which that those are uh, changing as well. Those rates are related. Haha, -ha, related rates. All right. So let's say triangle's dimensions are changing. This means, you know, dimension A, B, or C has a rate of change, that this rate is related to another dimension's rate of change. So in this case, if this point were moving down, if this point were moving down, we might notice, for example, I'm going to call this D, A, D, T. The rate at which A is changing with respect to time, D, A, D, T appears to be negative, right? The A is getting smaller. So this is something that is negative. And in addition, we also see that C is getting smaller as that point moves down. So if I were to say the rate of change of C, dc dt is also negative. So the rate at which A is changing is negative. It's getting smaller. The rate at which C is changing is negative. That means it's getting smaller. B in this case doesn't change at all. So if I were to write the rate of change of B, and actually I should use lowercase since I did use lowercase, dbdt would be zero. 
it's not changing at all. The rate would be zero for that one because B does not change if I move this point uh, from here to here. Okay. Differentiate your relationship with respect to one specific variable. This is like implicit differentiation. Usually it is with respect to time, but not always. So in this case, you know, we were talking about the scenario where it's changing with respect to time. So the derivative with respect to time of this Pythagorean theorem, if we think back to our related rates, uh, or rather our implicit differentiation from 3.2, we remember that the derivative of a squared is 2a. But because these variables do not match, right? I've got a t and an a, those are two different variables. I'm gonna end up with this da dt next to it. Plus the derivative of b squared, which by the power rule is 2b, but again, b and t are not the same variable, so we end up with this d, b, d, t term. And that's equal to the derivative of c squared, which again, by the power rule, is 2c. But since the c does not match the t, we end up with this d, c, d, t. So not only are the uh, actual side lengths related to each other here, like we have in the Pythagorean theorem, but the rates of change are also uh, related as well. Um, d c d t relies on all of the things on this this uh, equation and so we can actually find rates of change uh given you know enough information in a problem and that's pretty cool so let's talk about this with number one uh a police car approaching a right angled intersection hey here's my intersection it's a right angle uh, uh from the north is chasing a speeding car that has turned the corner is now moving straight east so the police car is approaching the uh intersection from the north and it's chasing the speeding car which is moving east generally useful to know your directions right sometimes this comes up this is north south east and west um, and so the speeding car is moving towards the east set up a relationship then find an equation that shows the related rates of the vehicles with respect to time okay so in cases like this where they don't give me any variables right this is really just the setup of a problem there's nothing i can really solve for here since there's no numbers but uh we're getting practice here setting these problems up if it's on a coordinate plane like we have this, any horizontal distance that I have, I'm going to refer to as x, like it's the x-axis, right? It's a horizontal motion, so it's going to be my x. Anything vertical, I'm going to refer to as y. And then, you know, you can call, in this case, the hypotenuse, whatever you want. I'm going to call that z for this. Um, so x, y, and z are my uh, three sides of this triangle. Now, in general, the idea in a related rates problem is to try to find an equation that connects the three variables together, whatever variables you have together. The thing that connects these three variables together, because this is a right triangle, is the Pythagorean theorem. So I know that x squared plus y squared is going to equal z squared. Now, what's happening? Well, the police car is moving, which means that this point is moving downwards. The speeding car is moving eastward, which means that this point is moving to the right. These things are changing as time changes. So what we do is we say that the, we're taking the derivative with respect to time because these things are changing as the time is changing. As time goes on, that police car is going to get closer to the intersection. As time goes on, the speeding car is going to move east away from that intersection. So... If we take the derivative of this, this is going to look almost identical to the work up here. Uh, because these variables do not match with the time, we're going to end up with these extra uh, rates. So the derivative is going to be 2x times dx dt plus 2y times dy dt is equal to 2z times dz dt. All right, so same reasoning as what we had before. Because this is the Pythagorean theorem, because those variables don't match, this is what we're going to end up with for that derivative. Now, we're setting up a relationship and finding an equation that shows the related rates of the vehicle with respect to time. Nice. We've got all that here. I want to quickly talk about what these are in terms of the context of the problem. dx dt. Here's x. dx dt is the rate of change of this line. So this is going to be uh, the speed of the car speed of the uh, of the car that we've got there as it goes in the x direction, right? The rate of change of x is going to depend on the speed of the car. y, or for dy dt, is the rate of change of the y. And I'll actually mention uh, 
that's going to be the speed of the police car. Because this distance Y is going to uh, change depending upon whatever the speed of this car is moving towards that, uh, towards that uh, vertex. And then dz dt in this case would be the uh, rate of change of this hypotenuse, the distance between those two cars. You can really think about are they getting closer or farther away from each other uh, using that, that information here. The only other thing I want to mention here in this particular problem is we notice that uh, in this case the x is increasing. So the, the x is getting larger, which would mean that I would expect that this dx dt right here to be positive. While as this police car gets closer to the origin, the y is getting smaller, which means I would expect dy dt to be negative here. So this is a negative value. Um, we can take that into account based on what they're, what they're telling us here, uh, but that's some useful things to pay attention to. Uh, we're going to revisit this problem in the next section 4.5. Today is more about like how do we set these problems up and not necessarily solving them, uh, but that's the setup for this problem. All right, last uh, piece for 4.4, uh, some dimensions are constants. So an airplane, which is at point A, is flying on a horizontal path that will take it directly over an observer point O. The airplane maintains a constant altitude. Uh, relate the rates of change of the distance between the observer and the airplane and the horizontal distance between the two. Okay, so sometimes we don't have a, a whole diagram and frequently if they don't give you one, your first job really is to try to sketch what's happening. Here is my airplane. It is flying in a horizontal path. So horizontal path would be like a horizontal line going across. So that airplane is flying on a horizontal path that will take it across uh, directly over an observer. So my airplane is moving along that horizontal path directly over the observer. So here's the observer. It went directly over that observer. The airplane maintains a constant altitude. Relate the rates of the change of the distance between the observer and the airplane. So here's the airplane and the observer. The distance between those would be this line right here. And so what do we see? What shape do we see here? I see a right triangle, another right triangle that we've got here um, that is being formed in this particular problem. And let's talk about what we know. Uh, similar to what I would, how I'd set these up before is I would call the horizontal distance X, I would call the vertical distance Y, and then we can call the hypotenuse, you know, Z in that case. And similar for our previous setups, we would take the derivative with respect to time of the Pythagorean theorem. And we're using the Pythagorean theorem because that is the equation that relates these three variables since this is a right triangle, right? It's going directly horizontal. It's going directly above. This has to meet at a right angle. Some problems are going to have different shapes. You're going to need to think about what equations are applicable there. It might be area formulas. It might be volume formulas. Uh, definitely going to be useful to brush up on, on those old geometry equations in order to do those. Um, so if we take the derivative here with respect to time, we're going to end up with that 2x dx dt plus... 2y dy dt is equal to 2z dz dt. Okay, Mr. Bortnick, why are we doing another one of these with uh, Pythagorean theorem? This is an example where some of the dimensions are constants. What is a constant here? What does that mean? Well, we notice here that the plane, the airplane, is flying directly overhead. It's horizontal to this. And as that happens, this z is changing as well, or right? it's going to get, as it goes over here, it's going to get closer and closer and closer to O. But the height of the plane is not changing. This y value is not changing. And that's a really important thing to notice, that y is not changing. Because of that, we know that the rate of change, aka dy dt, is going to be zero in this problem. And so if I were to plug that in here, we can actually see that this is going to be, this is equal to zero. So that means that 2x dx dt is equal to whatever 2z dz dt is. Since this whole term gets multiplied by zero, it becomes zero, it goes away. We can divide both sides of this equation by two, and that means that x times whatever dx dt is is going to equal whatever z times dz dt is. 
And so that would be the related rates in this particular problem uh, for this one. Interesting that one of these terms canceled out because we noticed that it was a constant. It was not going to change. Um, my only suggestion in these types of problems leading into 4.5 is to always take a derivative first before you start substituting those things in, like the fact that dy dt is zero here. Uh, but again, today's lesson was mostly on how to set these problems up, and it's an introduction to these related rates. We've got some setup uh, for these, these practice problems. Looks like dealing with cubes, so maybe thinking about cube formula, volume of cube. I'll give you a hint for that. The volume of a cube is s cubed, the side length cubed. Um, that's going to be helpful as you're going into these. Try some practice, check your answers, and as usual, good luck on your mastery check. Reach out if you've got any questions, and have a great rest of your day.